we gather to conduct a wreath laying ceremony as part of the tradition of Memorial Day. Memorial Day, formerly known as Decoration Day, began as a ritual of remembrance and reconciliation following the Civil War. It was extended after World War I to honor Americans who died in all wars and military actions. In May 1966, President Johnson signed a presidential proclamation recognizing Waterloo, New York as the birthplace of Memorial Day. This year marks the 151st anniversary of Memorial Day. The Yorktown National Cemetery, established in 1866, is located on ground fought over during both the birth and preservation of our nation. Mo notably, in, in 1781, when General Washington defeated Cornwallis, and in 1862, during the Peninsula Campaign, with Major General Magruder delaying Major General McClellan and the Un Union Army's advance on Richmond. There are approximately 2,200 Americans interned at this cemetery. 747 are known, 1,436 are unknown. Those buried here are for the most part Union soldiers, although 10 Confederate soldiers and three women rest here as well. The colors of the United States Army are adorned with 189 campaign streamers. The streamers serve as a reminder of the deeds, courage, and valor of unit members past and present and give soldiers justifiable pride and help create the cohesion and morale that keeps soldiers together in the stress of combat. In that tradition, we will decorate the wreath with eight streamers, representing the major wars and conflicts, and a red, white, and blue bow to represent all other conflicts and military actions to help us remember the sacrifices of those who went before. The Revolutionary War and Civil War. These wars saw the creation, formation, and preservation of our nation. It was during these times that we gained our independence. General Washington refused the crown and in a Gettysburg Cemetery, President Lincoln charged the nation to highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. World War I and World War II. From these wars, our nation emerged first as a world power, and then as a superpower with the mantle of leader and defender of the free world. It was 100 years ago that Europe and the world were entangled in the war to end all wars. The United States entered the First World War on April 6, 1917. And on the centennial anniversary, we honor and remember those who bravely defended the world from tyranny. Our World War II vets are now in their golden years, Take the time to get to know them and thank them. Korea and Vietnam Wars. These conflicts were fought to contain and stop the spread of communism. Our efforts in this part of the world would ultimately contribute to our victory in the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union. One was known as the Forgotten War, and the other for a time divided our nation. Today we both choose to remember and stand united with the veterans of Vietnam that continue to serve and are with us at the ceremony. It should be noted by presidential proclamation we are commemorating the 50th anniversary of Vietnam through 2025. Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. While the named operations of OES and OIF have officially ended, operations in Afghanistan and Iraq continue, and the history of these operations is still being written. Soldiers and other service members continue to make the ultimate sacrifice in these theaters. And while no longer the subject, new, uh, subject, while no longer the subject of daily news headlines, we must not forget them, and we will continue to support them. Many among us have served in these theaters, and some will return for another tour. Many have personally experienced the sorrow associated with the loss of a family member, a friend, a battle buddy. We honor those that have made the ultimate sacrifice and keep them in our thoughts. 
As a fitting for a Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Haynes will place the final decoration of the Memorial Day wreath. This red, white, and blue bow represents all other wars, conflicts, police actions, and civil humanitarian support operations that our armed forces have been involved in, with many making the ultimate sacrifice. It also represents that daily, all over the world, our nation's sons and daughters stand ready to accomplish any mission, great or small. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Odom, the Army Capabilities Integration Center. Good afternoon. I want to welcome Mr. Jim Brown, the Deputy Superintendent of Colonial National Historic Park. All the veterans and service organizations, American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Disabled American Veterans, the Legion of Valor of the United States of America, Virginia Honor and Remember, all local and state officials, all representatives, both past and present of our armed forces, and other guests, thank you for making time to attend this special event today. I also want to thank the soldiers of the Battlefield Brass Quintet of the 392nd Army Band from Fort Lee, Virginia, the firing detail from the 7th Transportation Brigade, the Living History Volunteers to my left, and the Virginia Colonial Chapter of the Association of the United States Army for their generous support today and for so many other uh, events. Memorial Day allows us, the nation, to pay tribute to the men and women who gave their lives to establish our nation to not only preserve its integrity, but the values for which it stands. The Yorktown Battlefield and Cemetery uniquely enables us to recognize all three purposes, independence, freedom, and union. Some men buried in the cemetery made the, in, the nation independent and free in 1781, and others saved the nation from dissolution nearly 80 years later. Memorial Day provides us the opportunity to remember the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. For many of us, Memorial Day no longer represents a simple patriotic event or a federal holiday. It now evokes memories of specific people. It now has a personal character to it. For me, and without question many of you, names like Springer, Beckman, Wakeman, Holiday, Martin, Borbonis, Putman, Clarkson, Domey, Putino, Fenty, and many, many others are real. T.R. Fehrenbach asserted the man who will go where his colors go without asking, who will fight a phantom foe in a jungle or a mountain range, and who will suffer and die in the midst of incredible hardship without complaint, is still what he's always been, from Imperial Rome to Scepter Britain to Democratic America. He's the stuff of which legions are made. Take time today, the men, to remember the men and women who had that stuff. The men and women who did the nation's bidding and who did our bidding. They're neither faceless nor imaginary. They're real. Memorial Day is also about honoring these men and women. And while it's an inherently somber day, and I'm not sure there are any ways around that, I encourage each of you to embrace President Benjamin Harrison's perspective. He said, I've never been able to think of the day as one of mourning. I've never quite been able to feel that half the masted flags were appropriate on Decoration Day. I have rather felt the flag should be at its peak. Because those whose dying we commemorate rejoiced in seeing where their valor placed it. We honor them in a joyous, thankful, triumphant commemoration for what they did. I ask each of you to honor the extraordinary contribution these men and women made to our nation, a contribution to keeping the flag at full mass. Keep these men and women who have given their lives in the service of our country in your prayers, 
and their families and your thoughts. Thank you. Raise This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending. You are invited to the base of the wreath for a moment of personal reflection or to greet the participants next to the museum. Thank you.